फ्रेंड यर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी अ प्रॉब्लम ऑन कैलकुलेशन ऑफ मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया फॉर ए गिवन लैमिना यर वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन फाइंड आई एक्स एक्स एंड आई वाई वाई ऑफ द यूनिफॉर्म लैमिना एज शोन इन फिगर द डायग्राम इज गिवेन द डायमीटर ऑफ द सेमी सर्कल इज हंड्रेड एम एम सो वी हैव टू फाइंड आई एक्स एक्स एंड आई वाई वाई फॉर दिस लैमिना आई राइट इट इन द डेटा your i x x is the moment of energy about x axis and i y y is the moment of energy about y axis now as this lamina is given which is also called as a plane figure the diameter of the semi circle is 100 mm so radius is 50 mm now if we look into this diagram it can be divided into one rectangle and another semicircle so this rectangle will be area one for us or for the first reference and semicircle would be the second area now we need to find out the moment of inertia for this composite section and for that the first thing is we should know the location of centroid because once we have centroid then only we can find moment of inertia so let us try to get the solution to this problem now in order to find the centroid first i'll say that since the location of centroid with respect to y axis is given by x bar is equal to a1 into x1 plus a2 into x2 upon a1 plus a2 keeping this as the first equation next similarly the location of centroid with respect to x axis is given by it is y bar is equal to a1 into y1 plus a2 into y2 upon a1 plus a2 this will be the second equation now we need to find out all the values here so first we'll get area 1 therefore a1 will be equal to the first figure is a rectangle having width 300 and depth 100 so it is 300 into 100 so that is equal to 30 into 10 raised to 3 mm square next x1 is equal to x1 is the location of y axis for the first figure so the y axis for the first figure will be at half of 300 so this distance of the y axis for first rectangle that will be x1 and x1 comes out to be 150 and y1 will be the location of x axis for the first rectangle and that will be at half of 100 mm because 100 is the depth here 
So the x axis for the first rectangle, it is at half of 100. So it is at 50 ml. Next, similarly, we'll calculate the other values that is area 2. This will be equal to here the radius is 50 mm and we want to find out the area of this semicircle. So it will be pi r square divided by 2. That is area of circle divided by 2, which gives us the area of semicircle. Here the radius is 50 mm. So therefore, area 2, it comes out to be 3.93 into 10 raised to 3 mm square. X2 is the location of y axis for the semicircle and for this semicircular portion, its y axis will be passing through this center y axis for the semicircle located at 50 mm distance because this is the radius from y axis so therefore x2 is equal to 50 mm y2 is equal to now y2 is the location of x axis for the semicircle now if we have a semicircular portion its x axis is located at distance 4r upon 3 pi from the rectangle and now this is the x axis for the semicircle we want to find this location of x axis with respect to the x axis here so that will give us the distance y2 so it will be 100 100 plus 4r upon 3 pi radius is 50 so therefore y2 value it comes out to be 121.22 mm now after we have got these values we can put them in equation 1 first to get x bar and then in equation second to get y bar so here i'll say that therefore put all values in equation number one and two respectively so therefore the first thing is x bar that will be it was a1 into x1 plus a2 into x2 here we have equation 1 divide by a1 plus a2 so i'll put the values here so first is a1 it was 30 into 10 raised to 3 into x1 150 plus a2 3.93 into 10 raised to 3 into x2 which is 50 divided by a1 plus a2 so from this i'll get the answer of x bar as 138.42 mm from left hand side because this was our reference we were taking the distances x from the y axis which was located at left hand side next therefore x bar i have got the value from left hand side now i want the value from right hand side for that from total that is 300 i will be subtracting 138.42 so therefore I'll get x bar as 161.58 mm from RHS that is right hand side. 
so now after getting x bar we can locate it onto the diagram here this was the y axis for the first figure which is the rectangle and it was located at a distance of one fifty mm from left hand side. Now we have found out the location of y axis for the complete figure. It is located at one thirty eight point four two mm from left hand side. So this distance will be less than 150 so somewhere here this y axis of the complete system will be there and it is 138.42 mm so 138.42 mm from left hand side and from right hand side it is 161.58 mm now this indicates the y axis for the complete figure and this was the y axis for rectangle one here is the y axis for semicircle second now after getting the location of y axis next thing is we should know where the x axis is there because once y axis is located it is clear that centroid will be there on this y axis but at which height that we have to calculate by using y bar so i will put the values in equation second here so in equation second we were having y bar as a1 y1 plus a2 y2 upon a1 plus a2 so therefore y bar is equal to a1 it was 30 into 10 raised to 3 y1 50 plus a2 3.93 into 10 raised to 3 into y2 121.22 divided by area 1 plus area 2 so therefore y bar comes out to be 58.25 mm from bottom because we have taken the references from bottom next therefore I even want to calculate the distance from top so for that from the total height of the figure which is 100 plus 50 that is 150 minus 58.25 that gives me 91.75 mm from top. Now, after getting the location of y bar, we can locate it onto the figure. Now, y bar is 58.25 mm from bottom. So, if we see into the diagram, the x axis for rectangle number 1, this is located at 50 mm from bottom, but the x axis of the complete system is located at 58.25 mm from bottom so I will mark that x axis just above 50 so here we have the value as 58 0.25 mm from bottom and from the top it is 91.75 mm so here we have the location of x axis so once we have the location of y and x axis 
their intersection will give us the centroid. So this is the location of centroid. And after locating the centroid, we can get the moment of inertia about the respective axis xx and yy. So now we'll start the MI calculation. Since MI about horizontal centroidal axis is given by Ixx is equal to Ixx1 plus Ixx2 plus Ixx3. This will be equation number 3. Now first we will calculate Ixx1. So therefore Ixx1 is equal to Mi about horizontal centroidal axis for rectangle 1. Therefore, Ix61 is equal to Ig1 plus area 1 into H1 square. This is by parallel axis theorem. Now why we are using parallel axis theorem is because if we look into the diagram here the x axis of the complete figure is at 58.25 mm from bottom but if we look at the x axis for rectangle 1 it is at 50 mm from bottom so there is difference between the two axes and that difference is called as h1 so since there is distance between the two axes. We are calculating the moment of inertia for rectangle 1 about the x axis of complete system, which is at 58.25 mm. Now, if we see here in the diagram, here there is distance between the two axes as h1. If this distance is 0, then there is no need of parallel axis theorem. But since we have some distance, that is why we have to use the parallel axis theorem and for that I have written the formula therefore Ix61 will be Ig1 is the Mi for rectangle number 1 about its own axis which is at 50 mm distance. So about this horizontal axis the Mi will be Bd cube by 12 because it is the formula for a rectangle about the horizontal axis area is b into d and here we have h1 square so if we go on putting the values b and d for rectangle number 1 b is 300 d is 100 plus area was 30 into 10 raised to 3 now h1 it will be 58.25 minus 50. So, from this, if we go on calculating, I will get the answer of Ixx1 as 27.04 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So this is the value of Ixx1. In the same manner, we will calculate Ixx2. Ixx2 is equal to Mi about horizontal centroidal axis for rectangle or here the figure is semicircle 
so for semicircle second so therefore i x x two will also be i g two plus area two into h two square by parallel axis theorem. So here if we see the x axis of the semicircle is at distance 4 r upon 3 pi from its diameter but the x axis of the complete system is at 91.75 mm from top. It means there is distance between the two axes that is the two x axis which I can extend it here. This is the x axis for the semicircle and here is the x axis of the complete system. So there is the difference between both of them and that difference would be called as h2. So again as there is distance we have to use parallel axis theorem. So we have written the formula here. Now therefore ix2 ig2 is the mi moment of inertia for the semicircle about its own x axis which is at 4 r upon 3 pi distance and that formula is 0 0.11 r raised to 4 plus area 2 we have calculated previously 3.93 into 10 raised to 3 h2 is the distance between the two axes here if we see previously we have calculated this distance as y2 and the answer of y2 was it was 121.22 mm that was y2 which we have calculated previously so here we have y2 value 121.22 mm and now if we see then from 91.75 mm here we have to subtract this small value which is here this height we have to subtract then only we can get h2 because this is 91.75 and as we know that this distance is 4 r upon 3 pi so from the total radius if i am able to subtract 4 r upon 3 pi that will give me this value and from 91.75 I will subtract this to get the value of h2. So that is minus r minus 4r upon 3 pi. So here I will go on putting the values. Radius is given as 50. Next here I will put the value of radius. So if I go on calculating this throughout, I will get the answer of ix 2 which is 16.27 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Next after getting ix 2 we can say that put the values in equation number 3 and since in equation 3 I had written ix63 also here ix63 is not there so I can write down ix63 is equal to 0 because we have only two area so ix61 plus ix62 so therefore put ix61 and ix62 in equation number 3 so in equation 3 we have ixx is equal to ixx1 that was twenty seven point zero four into 10 raised to 6 ixx2 16.27 into 10 raised to 6 so after adding them I will get ixx and my answer is 43.31 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4.
सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट आंसर मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया अबाउट एक्स एक्सिस नाउ सिंस एम आई अबाउट वर्टिकल सेंट्रॉइडल एक्सेस इज गिवेन बाय आई वाई वाई इज इक्वल टू आई वाई वाई वन प्लस आई वाई वाई टू आई कीप दिस एज equation number 4 now i need to calculate i y y 1 and i y y 2 so therefore i y y 1 is equal to m i about vertical centroidal axis for rectangle One. So therefore, I Y Y one will be equal to I G one plus area one into H one square. This is by parallel axis theorem. Now I Y Y one that will be given by IG one is the moment of inertia for rectangle number one about its own y-axis, which is located at one fifty mm distance. So that will be DB cube because about the vertical axis, the formula for the rectangle is DB cube by twelve plus area is B into D, and here we have H one square. Now why we are using parallel axis theorem is that because for the first rectangle, its y-axis is at 150 mm distance but the y axis for the for the complete figure it is at 138.42 mm so there is difference between these two axes and this distance is called as h1 so it will be 150 minus 138.42 so here if i go on putting the values d is 100 b is 300 Plus area was thirty into ten raised to three. Now h one is one fifty minus one thirty eight point four two square. So therefore, if we go on calculating this, the answer of i y y one it comes out to be two twenty nine point zero two into ten raised to six mm raised to four. So after getting i y y one, we'll get i y y two is equal to m i about vertical centroidal axis for semicircle second. So therefore. I Y Y two will be I G two plus area two into H two square. This is again by parallel axis theorem. Now, if we see here in the diagram, then. the y axis for semicircle is located at 50 mm distance from the reference axis here this is 50 mm but the y axis for complete system is located at 138.42 mm from the same axis it means there is difference between the two y axis and that difference is called as h2 so h2 will be 
138.42 minus 50. So here I will put the values. Therefore, as we have written, it is Ig2 plus area 2 into H2 square. Ig2 means the MI for the semicircle about its y axis, and that is given by pi by 128 into diameter is to 4. This is the formula of moment of inertia for a semicircle about the y axis plus area. It was 3.93 into 10 raised to 3. Next, H2. H2 is clearly visible. It is 138.42 minus 50. So, therefore, IYY will be here if I put the value of the diameter. Diameter is 100 raised to 4. Yes, yes. So, from this, I will get the answer of IYY2 as 33.18. Into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So once we have got IYY1 and IYY2, so therefore put IYY1 and IYY2 in equation number 4. So here we have IYY is equal to. I y by 1 it was 229.02 into 10 raised to 6 plus I y by 2 33.18 into 10 raised to 6 adding them the answer comes out to be 262.20 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So this will be the second answer that is we have calculated the moment of inertia about y axis for the complete system. Now if we look into the question there were two things asked ixx and iyy. ixx is the mi for the complete section about its x axis that is ixx we have found out the value. It is 43.31 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. Ixx is done. Next, we had to calculate Iyy, that is the Mi for the complete section about its y axis, and that answer is 262.20 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. And once we have solved both the questions, we can say that the problem has been completed.